Good morning, 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 and a lovely morning it is too. Let me show you how lovely. Look at that lovely morning. Oh. So, I want you to talk about a couple of things to do with the General Dental Council today. My favourite, least favourite, statutory body. There's a There's been quite a significant, uh, what's the word? Quite a significant develop in America. Development. All right, all right. You can calm down now. And it's been um, a reversal of what they call the Chevron Doctrine. And basically, it all stemmed from some boat owners, fishermen. And they were told by their regulatory authority that they needed to um, be monitored and that they would put monitors aboard the boats. And there was a big debate about who should pay for the monitors. And the fishermen said that the uh, regulatory authority should pay for the monitors because they're their monitors. And the regulatory authority said that uh, they were going to recharge the cost of the monitors to the boat because they're the ones being monitored. <coughs> anyway, the um, primary legislation didn't really cover any of this. And so um, the courts initially said that they're going to defer to the regulator. If, if the, the law is deficient in a particular area, then they would allow the regulator authority to fill in the gaps, if you like. And if that meant that they were said that the fishermen should pay, then the fishermen should pay. And that was the Chevron Doctrine. Anyway, um, the Supreme Court has now reconsidered this and decided that that's actually not how it should happen. And what should happen is where there are deficiencies in primary legislation, in other words, educations and things that haven't been covered, that the, um, it, the, they should go back to the court and the court should fill in. So you've got the legislature making the laws and then you've got the courts filling in the gaps, you know, ruling on the laws and then, and then also ruling on uh, what should have happened in those cases where the law is not entirely clear. And that's, you know, that is eminently reasonable. I mean, because the, the problem with the Chevron Doctrine was it allowed all the major regulatory agencies and every three-letter agency to start making pronouncements about how the world should work in their ideal world with no accountability and no, um, and no uh, democratic uh, mandate. So wh why is that relevant to dentistry? Well, uh, it's because of the Williams case, but I'm not going to, I'm going to cover the Williams case, but I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to jump a bit at the moment, right? So remember the Chevron doctrine in the Williams case. And the GDC released a, me a media release, we call them now, don't we? Not press releases. Saying that, or oh, it's probably a comms release now, I don't know. Anyway, saying that um, most early career professionals, dental professionals, hold a positive view or, or neutral view of the GDC with uh, dental care professionals viewing the GDC more favorably than dentists. I'm, I'm sort of paraphrasing it a bit there. Anyway, there's just just of this release was that uh, they wanted to know, the GDC wanted to know what people think of them. And what they found out was that uh, people get progressively less happy with them as time goes by. So they start their press reliefs off with a sort of quite a positive, you know, well, when everybody qualifies, they think the GDC is, is lovely and warm and cuddly. But it says as time goes by, dental professionals' perceptions of the General Dental Council are more informed by their colleagues' views rather than their own experiences of the GDC, with individuals registered with the GDC for a longer period typically less positive in their perceptions. So, 
they they have not stated the obvious, which is that the more dentists and dental professionals come into contact with the General Dental Council, the less positive their experience is, uh, and, and the less uh, positive their opinion is of the General Dental Council. What they've said in their press release is that these these people who love the GDC when they're disqualified, they're corrupted by a bunch of people who start to tell them that the GDC is is really uh, uh, inefficient and uh, illogical and uh, sort of a unfair in terms of how it how it deals with the profession doesn't deal in in good faith with the profession and we're going to come back to that later in the Williams case but there's they, the way they put it is they're more they're more uh, their perceptions are more informed by their colleagues views rather than their own experiences so what they're saying is that they, they you know these dentists they, they they think the GDC is lovely their own experience of the GDC is that it is lovely but then along comes a poison pill like me and saying that the GDC is uh, you know, really quite a corrupt organisation and totally captured by the legal profession, etc., etc. <coughs> Run by a dentist and no, a bunch of dentists that nobody's heard of under the chairmanship of a, of a you know, a, a bunch of people who, are, who jump from childcare agency to chairman of this and chairman of that, you know, they're sort of the quangocracy. So, <coughs> It goes on, it's not very long this, it says, perceptions are, do vary between the different professional groups. Dental nurses had the highest positive perceptions, with 59% viewing the GDC favorably. Now, if you um, know the history of the dental nurses in the GDC, you'll know that um, they, dental nurses didn't, they, they are by far and away the biggest group. They don't pay much in terms of uh, costs and uh, for a long time they didn't even have to be registered it was only through the efforts of Pam Swain and <clears throat> and it was done in pursuit of um, an attempt to try and gain some credibility to gain some uh, more you know recognition of more professional standing they didn't like the fact that dental nurses were recruited out of school tended to be girls tended to be the girls who really weren't all that academic, and uh, but but found a niche in dental surgery. Um, you know, they they thought they wanted more than that. They wanted the uh, like the lab technicians. You know, they want the the professional recognition, and they felt that the general dental council could do that for them. And in and in doing so, landed themselves with a massive great annual wage uh, maintenance bill. You know, for joining and. And to be fair, I mean, absolutely no prosecutions. I mean, I'm not saying there's never been a prosecution of a dental nurse, but it got to the point where, um, you know, they were telling these poor nurses, not only did they have to join the GDC, they needed professional indemnity. And then, uh, you know, people like Lockton and that, selling them indemnity. And uh, they were not getting prosecuted. And every year the whole profession was paying uh, millions in, in premium for indemnity that really wasn't required because they they have it via vicarious liability through the practice and also because um, they're employees and uh, they, they don't really do much, you know, that could get them prosecuted. So it kept, became quite embarrassing and almost to the point where the GDC was sort of searching around for nurses to prosecute and Lockton was casting around for nurses to represent so that they could say when they sold this stuff uh, uh, you know, the indemnity societies and and the British Association of Dental Nurses were pretty much in in cahoots and and cooperating, working together on this. But they really were trying to sell a product that, for which there was no need and which they couldn't even demonstrate had ever been used. So, <clears throat> the dental nurses, when they look at the GDC, they tend to look at them as something that confers status on them. Uh, validates their existence, etc., etc., and doesn't prosecute them. <laughs> Whereas dentists have, have obviously have a very different view. They view the GDC as 
you know, as, as, as having qualified, many of them with one or two or even three dental degrees, that they um, don't require validation from the General Dental Council. And the General Dental Council is vexatious and frivolous in terms of its prosecutions. So dental nurses had the highest perception with 59% viewing the GDC favorably. Uh, dentists had the lowest at 22%. <clears throat> That's positive, you know, look at the light of the GDC. The fewest number, one in five. And then additionally, dentists had the highest negative perceptions. With 52% of respondents expressing unfavorable views, significantly more than any other group. So, so the GDC asked the question, what does the dental profession think of us? And they basically, found out that more than half of the dentists really which is their only you know their only real business is just to keep a, a bloody spreadsheet of dentists uh, think that everything that comes with that keeping of that spreadsheet is, is viewed unfavorably so uh, there you go so people don't like the general dental council so <clears throat> that brings me on to the to the other thing the Williams thing Plot wipe, plot wipe. When you're uh, <coughs> looking out the window, just have a quick look at the traffic coming the other way. They've literally closed a major road. A road like this road. And um, uh, it's only because I <laughs> it's talk about working from home. I decided to, uh, somebody sent me an email and I opened it and it had the thing about their appointment and it said there's a lot of road closures uh, so can you uh, check on this one network and see if, you know, if there's any road closures so I checked and I realised that there's a big road shut so now I've uh, managed to come in a way which is, uh, will get me to work on time Anyway, so what's the next thing? So, so in about, uh, let's have a think, when was it? 20, last year, the GDC had a case called the Williams case, where <clears throat> Williams was a dentist and charged a top up fee, and the GDC said that wasn't allowed. That if you're going to do something on the NHS, then it has to be done on the NHS and, and not you're not allowed to say, well, but you know, if you paid a bit extra, you could get a nicer crown, or if you paid a bit extra, we could use some high impact acrylic or do a bit of stippling on your dentures, or, or, or it'll just take a bit more time, use better quality materials and use a better quality lab. And um, Williams won this because the court found that there was nothing really in the regulations that said that you you couldn't do this and I think to a certain extent I think they were a little bit um, a little bit puzzled as to why the GTC was so prescriptive about this you know that you have to do things to a poor standard uh, when you could uh, charge a bit more and the patient would quite willingly pay a bit more um, and do them to a higher standard but of course the NHS sees this as uh, shocking because uh, it opens the door to people saying yeah well you can have a you can have a pacemaker on the NHS but you know uh, just have a look down this list of pacemakers all of which cost additional money and uh, let me know which one you fancy you know or if not we'll we'll fit the NHS one so having having lost this case the GDC then appealed it and came in for a lot of flack for appealing it because it was like they were like well we just wanted to make absolutely sure but everyone was like no you didn't you just wanted you know you're, you're a child who <laughs> lost its ball and, and had a tantrum decided just to have another go you know have another buy of the cherry so <clears throat> having lost this decision the general dental council then said all right 
as you, as you expect. What, what has, how has this impacted? We've been doing things wrong all this time. How has this impacted our decisions that we've come to in the past? We need to reopen all the old cases where people have been prosecuted for top-up fees and uh, find out whether we would have done any of them differently. So what they did was they carried out a review of 124 cases involving top-up fees. Um, so, and that's important that you have got, hang on to that, all right, because these 124 cases involved, involved, it says involving top-up fees. Now, it doesn't say whether that was the prime thing that they prosecuted for or whether or not uh, it was just an additional, you know, one of, the, one of their blunderbuss charges. And then it says, having reviewed all the circumstances of the relevant cases and engaged the services of an independent legal counsel, no further action was required, as it was established that the outcomes in these cases did not depend on the, co on the interpretation of the contract regulations which was issued in the Williams case. So, basically they've looked at 124 cases and decided that in every case they did everything right. Which, I mean, quite frankly, when I said, when I asked my nurses the question, the General Dental Council had been, you know, got the regulations wrong in a material respect, insofar as it was the opposite of what they were, uh, the way they were enforcing things. In 124 cases, just have a guess, they reviewed those cases and how many cases do you think they found that they'd reached the wrong decision. And the guesses were 120 and 122. <laughs> no one got near <coughs> the actual <coughs> the actual figure, according to the GDC, which is zero. So 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 the, the whole point the zero figure itself is not tenable. It's not possible. And I'll tell you why. It's logically, it's not possible because le le <clears throat> in 124 of these cases, they're saying that they brought the case, they brought a charge of um, charging a top-up fee, and in absolutely no case was that charge ever um, acted upon. In other words, in no case, they may have found that the person was uh, guilty of charging a top-up fee. But um, it didn't make any difference. In other words, they were all struck off for other reasons. For example, right? And then <clears throat> all the alternative possibilities <clears throat> that all these dentists were going to be uh, suspended or, or disciplined, you know, uh, issued letters of warning or struck off for other reasons. But they then, but they then just decided to tack on a charge of uh, charging a private fee for an NHS uh, course of treatment. And <clears throat> I had a big row with um, John Reed when he was health secretary and it was at the Department of Health and I was working for uh, Alfie Morgan's paper, Dental Practice, and uh, I used to write the leader for years and I went along to the press conference and it led to um, A.E. Morgan papers being banned from uh, Department of Health press conferences because I went on at, at length about why they couldn't allow um, top-up fees because to my mind top-up fees were the thing that could have saved the NHS and still could. Hello, they've cleared all that. Look at that. Wow. That's completely clear. That's um, Jackie Palo's old house. So yeah, so and I said to him, like, you know, why, if you've just done an NHS root treatment, can you not do a private crown? And he was like, no, you know, it can't be done. Anyway, when, when we'd finished having a, our set to, going back and forth, he said to me, what, what um, magazine are you from? And I said, from A.E. Morgan Publications. And that was it. We just never got another invitation. And that's how the Department of Health works. You know, if you're... Uh, you have to look at these things on the second level. Don't don't just look on the surface and say, oh, well, yeah, I see, that's how that works. What happens is, <clears throat> if you get named, 
<laughs> like in the House of Commons, if you get named in a press conference, that means that they, they won't visit you again. And everybody else who's in that press conference, they will, they'll be like, there's a chilling effect. It'll be like there, but for the grace of God, blah, blah, blah. They won't, they'll then stop asking awkward questions because they'll see, they'll be thinking to themselves, ah, he's in his, he's in his shit. No, they've asked him where he's from now. We won't be seeing him again. <clears throat> and they know, so what they know is, when they go to a press conference, they've got to serve up one nice, easy ball, one friendly question, and then that's it, and then they get asked back. But well, not if they don't. And it's same with the Independent Legal Council, the General Dental Council. They they use a lot of lawyers, the General Dental Council. I mean, I would say it's a it's more of a general legal council than it is a dental council. The, den the dentists who are on there are sort of uh, cho chosen because they're nobody and they've done nothing and they can be relied upon to sit there and um, and do what the lawyers tell them. <coughs> Excuse me. And because they use a lot of lawyers, then they're always changing lawyers, you know. It goes out to tender the legal contract every few years and then one year it's Hempson's doing the legal services and next year it's someone else doing all the legal services. And I'm not saying that they sort of queue up to take turns, but the point is that every lawyer that works for the General Dental Council has got his eye on the main chance, which is to be appointed as a council. The council to the General Dental Council S for the C, and uh, you get a ton of work. You get all the work. You get all the work for years if you're uh, the right stuff. And uh, whether you're an in, you know, call yourself an independent legal counsel, that's fine. You can call yourself what you like. I mean, they call the review body the independent review body. It doesn't mean it's independent. Uh, so I'm not alleging anything that's been done improperly. But uh, you know the lawyers. Uh, the lawyers do. Uh, the lawyers do. <clears throat> I, I can't understand how an independent legal counsel have come to the conclusion that either all these charges were completely pointless, or that um, no action was taken as a result of of the ones that uh, were they. Oh, they They're patients, aren't they? They look like patients. Quick, bite. I don't recognise them. Oh, you're going to get to see the bins. And the smoking area. I thought they put in some EV charging points here. Oh, they have. Is that what they are? Oh, three, yeah, there are three, I see. Three EV charging points and three things that look like uh, soap dispensers on the wall. Ha! Ah, nobody's really using those, are they, I would say. Mind you, it's a bit early. Right, okay, my challenge, should I choose to accept it? Go on. It's to get into the surgery without those two people seeing me. But the trouble is they're standing outside the door. Next to the staff, they'll protect me when we go in. We'll have to walk in together. Anyway, congratulations, GDC. 124 cases, and you've won 124 nil. Talk to you next time.